Only a couple more weeks in this house. So we've done quite a bit to this place uh, in the last three years that we've lived here. First thing we did was install this new air conditioner. We actually went a little above and beyond. We shouldn't have spent so much money on it, but uh, it is what it is. We could have gotten away with spending a lot less, but we wanted a good air conditioner, so we got a good air conditioner. Now the new owner will have a good air conditioner, so that's cool. We uh, put the air conditioner in, we uh, put an HVAC uh, dehumidifier system in the crawl space, uh, we put a new bathroom, uh, bathtub in, we got that in just this year. Uh, we put a new washer and dryer in when we moved here as well. We uh, painted both rooms. Oh, so we, oh yeah, we put the fence in. This whole fence was installed. The chain link fence, the wood fence behind me here, that was there already, but that was the only fence. We had to keep the dogs in, right? So we closed it all off with uh, chain link all the way around. This gazebo is coming with us. I got to take that down yet in the next couple of weeks. So this is Thanksgiving weekend when I'm filming this. Yesterday, I didn't make a video. Uh, it was Saturday yesterday, so I'm filming this today on the Sunday. We had a Thanksgiving gathering in Winnipeg with Brett's side of the family. Today we have a family gathering with my side of the family. Let's get another turkey dinner. It's going to be great. Uh, before the family gathering yesterday, we went into uh, Winnipeg and got some new furniture to furnish our new home. Because it's more than twice the size of this home and it has two levels, we didn't have enough furniture to fill it up. <laughs> so we got uh, the couches we have now are going to go down into the basement there. So upstairs, there's a living room up there too. So we bought a couch and a love seat, coffee table and end tables for the living room upstairs. And uh, our dining room table is obviously for two, maybe four, the one that we have now. It's way too small for a house like that. So we bought a new uh, dining room table as well uh, with chairs to go around it. I wanted to buy a new king size bed too, but we have to measure out our new bedroom. I don't think a king size is gonna fit inside our new master bedroom. Which is sad because that was like one of the one things that I wanted. But we might be able to make it work, but we have to get in there first and remeasure it and think about it. We spent enough money yesterday with the new dining set and new living room set, but those uh, things are all being delivered uh, the day after we move in as well. So everything's all falling into place. Still got to pack everything though. Diesel came to the shop real quick to help me out. I had to fix the visor. Now, the way this visor is connected to the windshield, I've showed you before, the center is actually adhered, adhesed, adhesed? It's stuck to the windshield with glass adhesive. Well, it was so windy last week on the way back, it actually ripped that glass adhesive right off the glass and it took little pieces of the windshield too. Not much, but like little chunks. That's how strong that adhesive was, but I obviously didn't use enough adhesive because I used a combination of 60 pound two-sided Gorilla Tape and some glass adhesive around the edges. Well, this time we went all out. Just glass adhesive, the, the real good stuff. And I put a lot on there. Come with me. That thing's not going anywhere. Come with me. Diesel, thank you for your help. I really appreciate it. You wanted to come and hang out at the shop with me and held my tools for me and stuff. Passed me the, the glue, right? Yeah, you did a good job. So that's, I know, an excessive amount, and I'm just going to leave it like that. Let it dry overnight. Let me get rid of that front-facing screen for you so you don't see that reflection. One second. I lathered it on there. And then when I pinned it onto the windshield, obviously it squished out a bit, right? But that's okay. That's okay. Thing's not going anywhere. This visor will stay from now on. <laughs> it was so windy, it ripped it right off the window. It's crazy. And that's how this visor is stabilized on here, right? I wish it would have used the factory mounts like most aftermarket visors do. I don't know why this one doesn't. This one's from 12 Gauge Customs. It's a great visor, don't get me wrong. It has custom emblems on it. And it was a gift from Bullsnot, and I, I really do appreciate it. Just the way it was made, most aftermarket visors use the mounts on there, but this one doesn't, this one uses this. That's why you have to use adhesive to stick it to the glass. 
So if this uh, window ever, this windshield ever breaks or cracks or needs to be replaced, you actually have to break that off of there. So it's stuck there. Uh, and we'll worry about that problem when we get to it, right? <laughs> oh, well. Okay, I got to get back home. Uh, we also fixed the uh, LED light on top of the cab there. I'll replace that. So that's done. Diesel, you did a great job. I'm proud of you. I hope that holds. I hope it does. Uh, well, we'll see what happens, right? We'll see what happens. I gotta run back home now. You driving, Diesel? Good, good, I'm tired. More and more stuff gets piled up here all the time. Stuff that's gonna be going to the house. So it's the next morning. I checked up on my adhesive job on the visor that we did there yesterday, earlier in this vlog, and it's rock solid. I don't think there's any way that that visor is gonna rip off again. The only way we're getting that off is when we need to replace the windshield. We might have to cut it off. <laughs> it's, it's on there. Let's see what happens. I have a load out in Kenora. I've already got my trailer all ready to go. I just gotta go hook up. Head on over there, it's an empty step deck, aluminum 53 foot trailer. And go there, put some lumber on it, tarp it, and take it down to Brainerd, and empty it, roll up the tarps, put them on the trailer, tie those down, go to Shakopee, Minnesota, grab some shingles, tie them down, zip back this way. So let's make some good time, let's get out there. I got a Timmy's already waiting in the truck. It's not even in the truck yet, it's right here. I got a Timmy's right here. Let's not forget you, or you, you guys are all very important. Very important. Let's put you in the truck right now. Put you right there. Mm -hmm. We're going to get uh, the keys for Old Blue. Uh, there's nothing like the nice rumble of a diesel and the smell of diesel fumes first thing in the morning. That's nice. So far, so good with my new mount. I think this will hold better because it's, like I was telling you before, before it was a combination, first I put on two-sided Gorilla Tape and then I glued around the outside of it, right? And this time I just smothered it in like extremely tough glass adhesive stuck it right on there and let it cure overnight. I wish I could have let it cure for about 24 hours, but it was about 12 to 14 hours. Hopefully that'll be enough. It seems to be holding pretty well now. Hopefully it remains that way. We're still in Manitoba. We're headed towards Ontario. We're getting very close to the border here. I just gotta throw a little bit of fuel in my tanks, maybe about eh, 75 to 100 liters. We'll fuel up down in the States. But I'm just gonna top them off just a touch, just to make sure we don't run out of fuel later today. That would, uh, that'd be, that, that wouldn't be good. Once we deliver this load tomorrow, I've already told you, right, we go to Shakopee. We'll probably deliver that Wednesday. hopefully avoid any more big windstorms like we had last week that ripped the uh, mount off my windshield. That was some crazy wind. Like not tornado or hurricane level, but yeah, it was enough that it was very annoying. <laughs>
up to the blast zone here again. I'm not expecting to see any people working here. This is Thanksgiving Day 2023. Canada, our Thanksgiving Day is in October, just for the new people watching. This isn't a video from the future. American Thanksgiving is next month, I know. We got it cleaned up pretty well though, I mean, making progress here. Oh, but this road is just destroyed by all their equipment, yikes. Oh yeah, they got all these rubber pads over here all neatly stacked for the most part left. Everything's all neat, taken care of, ready for the holiday. Everyone's at home with their families. I had two Thanksgiving gatherings this past weekend and I decided to uh, leave today on Thanksgiving Day to get a head start on the week because I'm going to be taking a week off at the end of the month to move. That's very exciting taken off time to pack and to physically move and to unpack and settle into the new home the last time we got to do this since I've moved out of the house when I was 18 years old since I moved out of my parents house I've moved nine times I'm just a wandering soul so this is I'm tired of that I'm tired of moving all the time got ourselves a forever home, a nice family home. We can grow into it, but it's not too big and over the top. It's manageable, but it's big enough. It's exactly what we were looking for. So it'll be good. It'll be good for our kids to grow up there. But in the meantime, I figured I'd get a head start on this week and make up for the time I'm gonna be taking off later in the month. I'll take my holiday then. It won't really be a holiday, it'll be a working holiday, but you know what I mean. Throw a little bit of fuel in here, the Petro Pass. It's a lot more expensive here than it is down in Minnesota. So we don't want too much. I think I'm gonna put in 75 liters. That'll be good. That'll get me down there. I can fuel up down there then with the better prices. whole point is to not run out of fuel that uh, that would make it a lot more expensive than all the money I would have saved buying fuel down there would be spent into fixing my oops so let's not make the oops I'm not actually in that big of a rush I'm in more of a rush to get loaded I just want to get the freight on my trailer and then once the freight's on my trailer I'm delivering it tomorrow morning so we got lots of time to get down there and you know, have a good night and uh, unload it tomorrow. And then my reload appointment in Shakopee isn't till 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. We're going to try to get that bumped up if we can. We'll see. But if, if it doesn't work out, yeah, 5 p.m. So I got tons of time to get there. Tons of time. I'll probably be there like before noon. We'll see. I, I got to work it so that I don't leave Brainerd too early because I don't want to be wasting my e-log waiting to get loaded, right? I'd rather arrive there when I'm supposed to get loaded so I can just get loaded and keep going, right? Otherwise, I, I lose time. But uh, working with the split sleeper berth rule in the U.S., now that I understand it, it helps a lot in those situations. So uh, there's also that. Let's go throw some fuel in and we'll be on our way. I went with 80 liters. It's about 21 US gallons. That'll be enough to get us down there. I still have just below half tanks of fuel. This is that Petro Pass that uh, I talk about in Kenora here where people park here overnight all the time but there are signs 
around the edge and saying no overnight parking. I don't know. You're not supposed to, I guess, but people do. I try not to. Usually if I stay in town here, I have a few other places I can stay. I don't mind overnight parking. I just don't want to risk being woken kilometer, up in the middle of the night. Turn left on Rabbit Lake Road, Highway 598. Oh, quiet, Karen. I don't want to risk being woken up Proceed in the middle of the night. The highlighted route. Karen! I don't want to risk being woken up in the middle of the night and told to move. Or worse, getting a ticket or like whatever. I don't think that would happen. But. You know, it's a privately owned place. If they put up signs, they don't want us there overnight. I try to respect that. You know, it's that's their choice. In 200 meters, slight right on Trans Canada Highway, Highway 17A. That's where I'm going, Karen. I know. I know how to get there. So bossy. Yeah, I know. I'm turning. I'm turning. Don't gonna swear at me. on this road for 11 kilometers. lookers on you get a clear view of what's going on oh those are dirty dirty oh those need cleaning so I'm checked in here there was three trucks ahead of me when I got here that were in line there's three getting loaded and two at the tarp station with one waiting to get in so it's pretty busy here hopefully everybody knows what they're doing and tarps efficiently and quickly otherwise I'll be waiting in the tarp lineup for a while but like I said, no big rush now that we're here and checked in. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. It's a holiday today, right? You don't want to push it too hard. Uh, so from here we have six hours of driving south once we're out of here. It's a shame that, you know, we got to tarp it all just to go six hours down the road on a nice sunshiny clear day just to untarp it. But... <laughs> Just in the off chance that you hit some rain or some dirt, right? Tarping is mostly for winter time because you want to keep that road grime off of everything, right? Especially with this wood. This isn't regular lumber. This is engineered lumber. It's very special. It has special purposes. It was created for a very special purpose, just like you. And uh, so we got to protect it, right? Is that clean now? so hard to get these things clean. You just clean them, you put them on your face, and suddenly they're just dirty. Magically. Man, these things are scratched up, though. Yikes. Before I got these uh, lens wipes, I was pretty careless and was wiping them with microfiber towels, which I thought would be safe because they're soft, right? They won't scratch your lens. It's just soft. Turns out the things that those microfiber towels catch inside them, like the grains of dust, those are very hard. They scratch. And now I've got scratches all over my lenses. So now I use these. Not an ad, but if you want to know, I bought a bunch of these off Amazon. Zeiss. 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 Lens wipes. They work pretty good. They also sterilize it too, right? I think it's with those. Whatever. Okay, so now we uh, twiddle our thumbs and wait. Hopefully we won't, we won't be here all day. didn't take long and we're off. It's about two hours from the time I got there to the time I left. So I was actually pretty impressed with all the trucks that were there. Things moved along pretty quickly. I'm making my way down uh, the King's Highway 71. This will take us towards International Falls, Minnesota in Fort Francis, Ontario. One of my most popular crossings now. Never used to cross here, but with these loads, I go through here all the time. I actually don't mind it. It's nice, there's never any lineups.
Everything's closed up. It's Thanksgiving. I wanted a coffee. But I guess we'll have to wait till we get to the U.S. Because it's not a holiday in the U.S. today. There's our gift wrapped present for Minnesota. I hope they like it. I wrapped it myself. Ah, I got those bungees back there crooked, didn't I? Well, I hope Minnesota forgives me. Cause I'm not redoing it now. <laughs> down the road and continue going. It's a beautiful fall day. As soon as that sun goes down, it gets cold fast. Minnesota welcomes you. Thank you. So this is about a third of our journey three hours left. It was two hours from my pickup to the border here. Now I have three hours Continue on this road for 18 kilometers. down to Brainerd. I guess it'd be a little more than a third. I always love this little downtown. I never see a lot of people on here though, but then again, I usually come through here later in the evening like this, later at night. week or two ago oh, last week and we were saying how all the trees were still green now look at that like a week later all the leaves are gone a lot of them are anyway it happens quick these trees off to the left are just beautiful big red trees we're hoping to plant a new tree next spring in our new backyard there's already a nice little spot landscape for it. The tree that the previous owners had put in there looks like it didn't make it. It's dead. So we're gonna take that out and plant our own tree in there. We're thinking of putting a weeping willow in there and just watching it grow as our family grows. Maybe take a picture of it together as a family decided every year. We can look back on how, how it's growing, sort of represent the, our growing family. We're here in Brainerd and uh, ready to unload. Just gotta wait for them to open. So I'm gonna go around and check all the tires. So if you guys missed the video where I explained why this tire was wearing faster than this one, it's because that inside tire was overinflated. When I got that tire patched, the guy who did the tire repair didn't check the air pressure of this tire and filled that one up. 15 psi higher than what this one was and that's why it wore down so i lost quite a bit of rubber off that tire but uh, since then i've equaled out the pressure and the wearing has become even again so lesson learned always double check your tire guy when he fixes a tire i thought that that was sort of just obvious that you got to make sure that you fill it up to the right pressure I don't think he asked me either. Well, it could have been an oversight. You know, it was it was late. I don't hold it against him. He was a nice guy. Just now I know. Double check. <laughs> when you get a tire fixed, make sure that the tires all are at the same pressure. Because any, any uneven pressure will cause uneven wearing. And uh, then you lose money. Because all that rubber that wore off of there, I don't get that back. It's on the road somewhere. I caught it before it was too big of a problem anyways. So here's my 
load. It's all gift wrapped for them. Ready for them to open first thing in the morning. This trailer is so dirty. I might wash it on my way home. I was thinking of getting a truck wash anyways. Yeah, tomorrow. Or the next day, whenever we go through Fargo, right? Yeah, tomorrow or the next day. I'm thinking I might pay for them to wash this trailer too. This trailer must have gone up north. Because it's just like filthy, filthy, filthy. And look at the rims here. Let's see if I can get my shadow out of the way. Look at that. We'll see. We'll see. I don't like paying to wash someone else's trailer too often, you know? Uh, I don't mind doing it every now and then if I'm going to be holding on to the trailer for a good while. Because I like pulling a clean trailer. But if I'm just going to be switching to a different trailer, I could probably call and get a PO for it. That I could probably do. I'll probably do that. What a PO is, is a purchase order number. So, I call and I get a fancy little number. And then they pay for it. It's their trailer, then they pay for it. But usually if it's just the trailer, I'll pay for it myself. Like I said, if I'm going to be holding on to the trailer for like two weeks, I don't mind. I don't mind doing that. They do so much for me that the least I can do is wash their trailer every now and then, right? Not every time. <laughs> I might do it with this one too, you know? like to give back and I get something out of it too I gotta pull a clean trailer we'll see if I'm if I'm gonna be holding on to this trailer for this whole week yeah I'll probably get it done we'll see I'll talk about that tomorrow it's time to go to bed though time to call the family go to bed it's definitely sweater weather out there it's almost zero degrees three degrees Celsius and that would be what is three degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit he's not you don't feel like talking okay 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit and today when I was filming this is Thanksgiving in Canada I'm in the US now but it was Thanksgiving where I'm from so I want to say a couple of things that I'm thankful for I'm thankful for my wife and my son I'm thankful for our new home that we're moving into. I'm thankful for my family, my mom, my dad, my sisters, my in-laws, my nephews, all of them. I, I have a really great family on all sides, on Britt's side, on my side. I, I, I'm very thankful, very thankful. So first and foremost, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my friends thankful for my truck for the work that I have to do of course I mentioned our new home I'm very thankful that we were able to pull that off this year uh, wasn't looking like we'd be able to do it but uh, like I said the stars aligned and uh, it was made possible for us you know it wouldn't have been possible without people coming together to help us so I'm thankful for that you know who you are. Very thankful that you helped us make this possible, that we could move into this home. And I'm thankful for peace and safety in our region of the world. Living here in North America, we live in what sometimes feels like an impenetrable fortress with our good friends and brothers and sisters, United States right next door, and with us on the same continent with a combined military defense force of North America, I'm thankful that I can raise my son in a land that's not at war, where there's no war happening here. I, I realize there are wars raging around the world. And my, my thoughts are with you guys out there in Ukraine fighting. My thoughts are with you guys in Israel, Palestine fighting right now. My thoughts are with all the conflicts, all, all the different people fighting and dying. I just wish we could just find a way so that people could just stop dying. Much easier said than done, right? Terrible to hear what's coming out of the Middle East now. Terrible to continue hearing what's coming out of Eastern Europe. So on this Thanksgiving, 
I recognize that there are conflicts around this world that are just terrible. But I'm thankful for the safety and security we have here at home. And I want to remember that that doesn't come for free. That didn't just happen. Many, many people in the past have given their lives, been slaughtered in brutal ways so that we can have the peace and security we have. So without going further into that, like I said, I don't like diving deep into these things because I know these are hot button issues. And I don't want to start up controversy. I don't want to start up fights. I just want people to stop dying. So anyways, I hope you sleep well tonight, wherever you are. I hope you're safe. And when you get out on the highways here, please remember to drive safe. Go down below to the comments section, even if you're not Canadian. Tell me something you're thankful for today. Just, just one thing. What are you thankful for? Maybe we'll do this all over again for American Thanksgiving next month. And you gotta pick something different, so you gotta find something different then that you're thankful for. So, if you wanna save the good one for then, okay, but. <laughs> I look forward to reading all your positive comments and hearing all the different things we have around the world to be thankful for. Even when sometimes it might be hard to find something. I know, I, I believe in you. I'm sure you can find one thing to be thankful for. I'll see you tomorrow.